Hi, so some people are having trouble with question one assignment two, so question two assignment two. Um, partly because of the misprint, but mostly because of graph magic software. And I found I didn't have any trouble, which made me think that maybe it's about driving the software. So I thought I'd just share with you how I did it. So to plot a line going through two points, we're going to type the points in over here where it says data plot. So one comma zero. And if I remember rightly, it's four comma minus three. Minus three. There we go. Now what this system does is it tries to find a graph of a function that will satisfy passing through those points. So let's say by mistake that the last thing I was doing was a sine wave. And I picked the sine function. Okay. So I've got my two points and I go curve fit. And what I get doesn't look anything like my straight line. The computer doesn't know what I'm looking for. So I'm telling it I'm looking for a sine wave with a frequency of about one passing through those two points. And here I have my sine wave. And just to check that, if I start at a given point and I count my wave, one complete cycle, it is approximate a frequency of one. It won't be exactly because I'm, it has to pass through those two points. So, actually, I'll just clear that way. If you plot something you don't like, you can just pop up here and say clear screen. There we go. Now, if I go to options on data plot and I say I want a straight line, a straight line is a polynomial with a maximum order of one. Because it's mx to the power one plus cx to the power zero. You can make this a bigger power, and it will probably still draw a straight line because you've only got two points. But safe and sorry, let's make it one. So we'll say OK. So now I'm going to plot a polynomial with first degree curve fit. There's my straight line. Now the circle goes in the form x plus offset squared. To do squared, put your x plus offset in brackets. The squared symbol is the caret, which on the normal keyboard is shifted 6. And then we're going to do the same thing with y plus y plus 1. Oh, sorry, mistyped there. Excuse my typing. I'm leaning over the funny surface here. Squared equals 4. The 4 is r squared. Remember Pythagoras? x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So looking at this, I know that my circle is going to have a radius of 2, and it's going to be centered around y equals minus 1 and x equals plus 2, because that's what you need to cancel those offsets. So let's just see if that's what we get. Press enter, and there is my circle. So we've now got this is point C, and this is point D. And you can check where they are by placing the cursor over those junctions and looking at these numbers down in the bottom corner here. So you see it says at point, and it's got a couple of places. If I move the cursor to point D, it's around about. Right. You can see it, it does this weird sort of stuff. Once you get on the line, it kind of hooks to it. But it's about 3.3 .3 by about. 0.2.4, but you go. You've got to calculate it using algebra because the system doesn't ask you to read it off the graph. And one last thing I'd like to actually share that's quite handy: when you print this, if you want to print your graph and make it look really cool, one of the things I found works well is to say "draw graph with wide lines." This tick box here in the print window that makes your graph lines look a lot clearer then they look if you um, don't tick it. It just makes it stand out which bit is your graph. Which hopefully I can show you in a moment. I was having a little trouble with the printer settings earlier with really thick lines. So I'm just waiting for the printer there. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but we'll try it and see. Here it comes. So I'll see you in a sec.
Yeah, but... <laughs> something to do with my printer settings at the moment. As you can see, uh, the lines are extremely thick. But um, yeah, it's a setting worth playing with. I'm sure there's some way to get it better than that because I did have it better before. Anyway, so the main thing to remember is data plot. Put your points in, go to options, and check that you've got the function you expect. You would have found in assignment one as well that there was a question about tidal waves where, uh, or tidal patterns where there was a sine wave. And if you set the frequency to one, you got the wrong sine wave. You got this weird sine wave that didn't really pass through any of the points. But if you set it to two, two high and two low tides each day, it works fine. So it's, it's just worth playing with those settings a bit. I think it's about being used to the software. It's not one software is better or worse than another. It's just getting used to how a particular developer has, has put their stuff together. Anyway, I hope that will help. See ya.